Thank you, Sarah. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Welcome to you all and to all of you online. We love having you with us here on this Easter service. I'm John Mazinski. I'm one of the pastoral interns here, and we're going to have a celebration. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. And now please rise for our opening hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today.
our service in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Dear God, this past week has been one of mixed emotions, of faith struggling to understand. We greeted you with palm branches and sat at the table with you to share a farewell meal. We have witnessed your death on a simple wooden cross, and yet, on the third day, you come to us again in victory. By this we know that death is not the final word. As the sun rises to meet a new day, boldly rise in our lives this Easter morning, for you are our hope, our life, and our joy. Amen. Christ is risen. Our God is full of grace and peace. Jesus rises among us as a sign of healing, hope, and joy in the midst of our fearful and wounded world. We are bold this Easter morning to ask God to fill us once again with the Holy Spirit so that we may have faith and life through Christ, our risen Savior. And so we pray. Almighty and wondrous God, on this day of new beginnings, we offer our songs to proclaim your victory over death. All that you have done is marvelous in our eyes, and we all offer our praise to your holy and powerful name. Receive the joyful thanksgiving we offer to you, and bless it as a declaration of your worthiness to be worshiped. Amen. Christ is risen. We're going to do now a Psalm 103 responsive reading. Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being. Praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, my soul. Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for our chancel choir anthem.
please stand for the singing of our Alleluia verse. scripture reading for you. It's not going to be up on the screens. Does anybody remember a thunderstorm Friday night? So that took out pretty much all of our technology here. So if you're online and you're watching, I don't know how that's happening. It is an Easter miracle. (laughs) So as we reset the screens here, listen to the Easter story from Luke 24 verses 1 through 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. And then from the Apostle Paul, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 14 through 22 If Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God. For we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But he did not raise him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins." then those who also have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are of all people to be pitied. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead comes through also a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. I want to invite all of the kids to come forward for a children's message at this time with Mr. John. If I'm too scary, bring your mom or dad up with you. Come on down. All right. Have a chair anywhere. Yeah, that's good. So what do you guys think of when you think of Easter? Food, uh, chocolate, eggs, bunnies, yeah, bunnies. Well, would you rather have a full egg or an empty egg this morning? The full one, right? Okay, I would. You know, this one here rattles a little bit. There's got to be something good in it. But we're celebrating Easter today because the tomb is empty. The women went to the tomb early in the morning to do, to do things with Jesus' body, to put more spices on his body. In the tomb, the stone was rolled away, and an angel was outside and tell, told the woman that he is risen. He is not here. And the women ran back to tell the guys that were hiding out in the house that he was risen. And they were so excited that their words seemed like nonsense to the guys. But Peter runs to the tomb and checks it out. And he sees it's empty, but he doesn't get it yet. 
So we're here today to celebrate Easter and to celebrate that risen and new life that we have, that eternal life that we have with Jesus. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the gifts of new and everlasting life, and thank you for forgiving our sins. Amen. And now, each of you gets an egg. So see Pastor Paul, see me, come on in here and have an egg, and go on back to your seats with your mom and dad. You get to have your color first choice. <laughs> there you go. What would you like? Thank you for coming out. There you go. Oops, sorry. Yeah. So John and our pastoral interns are going to graduate here in May and, and be ordained in June. And I told him, I said, before you get ordained, you have to do a children's message. <laughs> <laughs> Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Easter. I'm Pastor Paul. And again, I'm so glad you're here. My favorite part about today is seeing all of you here. And so I hope that your Easter goes well. And let me just get this out of my system. Go Hawkeyes. Um, so yeah, yeah, you can applause for that. That's right. Um, so, uh, so good to be here with you this morning. We have been having a lot of technical problems. Uh, just because of the storm on Friday, which is really appropriate though. I mean, you want it to be thunderstorming and lightning on Good Friday, right? So it's kind of been that perfect week of weather. Let me, uh, we've been going through a series entitled how, how We Got These Things Wrong. We've been talking through s scripture passages that we've kind of maybe misinterpreted. But this one, this morning, we got this one right. We got this one right. And this is how we got it right. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, alleluia. That, that, that's absolutely the, the truest statement that's ever been said. Now let me ask you something. Uh, do you have anybody in your family who claims that they are always right? You don't need a point, no pointing, it's okay. Don't need to call anybody out. So my mother-in-law tells me and me alone that she's right 99% of the time. I think she saves that just for me. And so when I think about being right, I think about my mother-in-law. And it's funny because today is a day that as Christians, we can walk out these doors and say, we got this one right. Like the world might not get it, but we, we got this one right today because Jesus is alive. He is, uh, he's alive and well. He is the king of the universe. Jesus hasn't gone anywhere. Jesus hasn't forgotten about the world. Jesus isn't just eating, you know, pom-poms and, you know, cherries in his heavenly home. He's the, he's the king of the world. And so we, we've got this one right. And it makes a difference for us. Let me just tell you a few things about what it means to be right as Christians. First of all, it means that we're forgiven in the midst of our failures. It means we're forgiven in the midst of our failures. So you don't have to live life uh, ashamed of your failures. You're forgiven. There's actual life in the statement that Christ is alive. I was at the store the other day and I just said, Happy Easter to the person. And they looked at me with strange eyes and they said, well, yeah, okay, uh, happy solstice. I said, oh, that's interesting, because yeah, they're trying to make a point with me, because, you know, Easter's kind of fuddy-duddy, I guess, these years, these days. And, you know, I'm like, okay, but what's happy about the solstice? That, you know, I wanted to ask that, but I, I had a little five-year-old with me. And what's happy about the solstice? It happens every year. It's about, you know, astrological objects floating and things moving and physics and science. What's happy about it? It's just a fact. Easter is different though, because there's something to be happy about. Because if Christ is alive, that means that we're forgiven. It means that yes, the planets move around, but that's not the only thing that's going on. The guy who created the planets is alive and he has forgiven us in the midst of our failures. 
And so what it means to be right, it means to be able to say, yes, I'm forgiven. I'm a forgiven child of God, even in the midst of all my struggles. And so whatever struggles you brought here this morning, Easter means that you are forgiven. Jesus being alive means that you are forgiven. It also means that you have a future in the midst of fears. I feel like we live a little bit in a world of fear these days. What's going to happen next? Obviously, I don't know, I, I kind of find that the Baltimore Bridge collapsed to honestly be a miracle that there weren't more people who died from that. I think about all the, the strife in our world, and we can think about our future, but I think the Apostle Paul kind of does this for us in 1 Corinthians 15. I think that's his question. He's kind of asking, what's the point? I mean, if Jesus is alive and he rose from the dead, and all these things around us continue to happen that are that are sad, that are tragic, that are horrible, what difference does it make? And his point is this, if Jesus is alive, it makes all the difference in the world because no matter what your future holds, Jesus has you in the palm of his hand. You don't have to be afraid anymore. You can live with confidence that Jesus loves you and that you have life in his name. And so this is what it means to be right this morning. This is what it means to be able to say, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. That means I'm forgiven and I've got a future. That makes all the difference in the world for us as Christians. Now, the other part of this is how to live having it right. Because you see my mother-in-law, when she says, son, I'm right 99% of the time. What she's saying to me is that I'm wrong. (laughs) Okay, that's what she's saying. She's saying, I'm wrong. She's like, remember your place, Paul. You are not right all the time. Now, as Christians, though, even though we're right here, it doesn't mean that we go out in the world and just tell everybody, I'm right, and stick your nose in their face. In fact, if you want to live having it right, As Christians, we're called to share it and not to shove it. We live in a shove culture today. Wouldn't you say that? We live in a shove culture. Let me get up in your face. Let me tell you how it is. I'm going to tell you what's important. I'm going to tell you the truth. And Christians throughout history, in my opinion, uh, have never been called to shove their faith. They've been called to share it to share it in word and deed, to get on their knees, to wash people's feet, to care for the poor, to care about their communities. Here on April 21st, by the way, that's a few Sundays away, we're going to have over 20 community organizations here on Sunday morning that are partnering in our community to make the community a better place. And you know what they're looking for? They're looking for Christians who would simply help in the community. So we determined instead of having us all go to all of their places, we figured we gather here on Sunday mornings, let's have them all come here. And over 20 of them have said yes, we would sure love the help of any Christians you've got there at St. Mark's. Anybody who's just willing to share that Easter message in word and deed. And so how you live having it right, you don't throw it in people's faces, you just share it with your love, with your compassion, with your kindness. And then finally, how to live having it right is that you follow Jesus all the way, every day, which is really the message of Easter, isn't it? Because Jesus rose from the grave. Peter runs to the tomb because, you know, Peter's a dude. He's a guy. He's got to have proof my wife can't be right, right? You know, the women, they have to be wrong. There must be something wrong here. And he gets to the tomb and he's like, oh my goodness, they're right. And what does Jesus say to them? Well, Jesus meets them on multiple occasions after Easter. One of them is my favorite here from John 20. Jesus said, peace be with you. You can imagine the strife they had in their life, the confusion, the what's next? Jesus is alive. We're still being hunted, though, as rebels. And he says to them, peace. As a father sending, as a father sent me, I'm sending you. And they breathed on him and said, receive the Holy Spirit. 
That's what we get to do today and forever as we get to follow the lead of the Holy Spirit. We get to follow Jesus into the world, follow him in confidence, know that we have it right for a world that has so many things wrong. We get to be the people who follow Jesus into the world. Um, You might have noticed I'm wearing gold shoes today. If you haven't checked it out, here they are. In fact, let me help you out. That's probably sacrilegious, but there they are, gold shoes, right there on the communion rail. This last Friday, uh, we buried a dear friend of ours, uh, Pat Bush. And this last Christmas, I decided, uh, as before Christmas, I decided on Amazon Prime Day, because that's like one of the greatest days um, of the year, to buy these gold shoes. Now, the story behind that is that every Christmas, we have a women's Christmas dinner, and I wear strange outfits. And so every year, I'm trying to up the previous year. So I bought these gold shoes, and I wore them to the Christmas dinner. And Pat loved them so much, she said before she died that she wanted me to wear them at her funeral. And so I wear them today because the same message that I shared at Pat's funeral is the same message I share today on Easter Sunday. These, sho- these gold shoes, even though they start out as fun, they're actually victory shoes, aren't they? Revelation tells us that someday when Jesus comes again, we're all going to wear gold crowns. Well, let's just add to that gold shoes as well. Because when we follow Jesus, We know that we don't have to fear in our world. We know that we have a future, that we have a promise. Pat got it right. We get it right as we follow Jesus as well. And we wear our gold shoes as shoes of victory because we know that Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Will you pray with me? Let's pray. Jesus, we are so grateful that we have this one right. Of all the things that can be confusing or all the things that we can get wrong, this one we've got right. It's that you've died and that you've risen from the grave and you are alive. We thank you for being alive for us, Jesus, for loving us and leading us every day. And we pray this in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Amen. Please stand.
us pray. Lord, we thank you for the safe return of our Panama mission team and the good and the love that they shared with the people. We thank you for all the wonderful things going on at St. Mark's this past week, the nine to nine day of prayer, the Good Friday service, our photo booth, our funeral. We pray for the family of Pat Bush and their peace and their hope that she, buried on Friday morning, have eternal life. We thank you for this Easter morning, for friends and family that are with us. We thank you for the beautiful day that we have this morning. Lord, we pray for the people of Ukraine and the people of Israel, that they may know peace and soon. But most of all this morning, we thank you for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, in whose name we pray, amen. And now, taught by our Lord, we are happy to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now please receive the benediction. As you go on your way, may God go with you. May God go before you to show you the way, behind you to encourage you, beside you to befriend you, above you to watch over, and within you to give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Our recessional hymn is Alleluia, Jesus is Risen.
And now go in peace and serve the Lord.